Hello. Well, hello there, Spencer. How's hay going for you? It's been really good fun. I'm <laughs> doing such a variety of things. We had our wonderful time last night, which I thought was really interesting. And today I had a great session with uh, an author who's written this fantastic book about the origins of the two charges in international law, genocide and crimes against humanity, which sounds like rather, if not dry stuff, a bit sort of strange, but actually it's so fascinating. And I'm about to see Gary Kasparov, whom I think you're interviewing as well. We so. will be seeing him so too, yes, fun. absolutely. Rack him and stack him. Absolutely. Well, I mean, few people more than Gary Kasparov have been at the, in the eye of the storm, have they? And yeah, it's, exactly. It's um, okay. You mentioned that you are, well, everyone knows you are a famous early adopter. Mm. Are you seem to try everything that comes out? <laughs> well, Arnold Baxter, the composer, said in his life you should try everything once except incest and country dancing. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that seems like a pretty good rule. No, yeah, I am, I am perpetually driven by curiosity. It may even be a kind of addictive greed, which is a sort of um, rather graver example of the, of the consumer greed that we all share, really, don't we? I mean, our economy is more or less predicated on the, the fact that we all want new shiny things. And I, maybe I'm just more of a jackdaw, or is it a magpie? Which of the birds? I think both of them. They <laughs> like shiny things, and I just, I still lust for them. I still love the unboxing. I still love the, you know, the first kind. I'm always, I get short of breath and I pant slightly. It's almost like, you, can't calm down. you know what calm I mean? Down, yeah. I, I, I'm sure you were like that too, or you wouldn't have been in this job for so long. I tell you what, you though, must get actually, the same feeling. I, I think I've become a little bit of a cynic because I can see there's so much out there to, to glamour yes. the, the, the mainstream audience, and yeah. I genuinely look for stuff that's going to be useful in my life. And I not understand. Try everything. Yeah. I mean, useful is good, unquestionably. I think beautiful is good, and useful is good if they can be both. It's fantastic. And there are, you know, I, I compared it to last night to, to a stream technology, and it's one that's never going to stop, it seems, and sometimes it becomes rapids and, be, and is almost dangerous. And, um, and other times it does go off into a little stagnant pool, a little, and you think nothing much is changing, everything's, you know. Yeah. Th there's an old saying that, um, um, that improvement, optimization, is the enemy of in innovation. That actually, if you just keep making things better, you, you're not innovating. Mm. You actually want to move on to for new things. In the moment, evolution, it, not revolution. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but I think we we are coming out of a cycle of slight repetition and things. Just, you know, what I mean, the iPhone was now exactly ten years ago, and then a year later, the, the first Google phone started coming out, and then Android eventually sort of established itself, and you know, a few others like Palm OS and things mm, didn't yeah, succeed. Yes. BlackBerry fell sadly in a way, um, and 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 we feel we've been in that same environment for, for some time now. I think it goes like that, doesn't it? Yeah, There's a lot of exactly, improvement and then suddenly drones exactly. or suddenly and virtual reality. And obviously it sounds a bit vulgar and banal, just as, as if it's you're just sort of like watching the charts or something. But it is more than that. It's about, because we've seen how it changes so much in, in, in you, you know, around the same time as the iPhone came out, Twitter came out. And, and these things have changed us extraordinarily. So, Yes, they start off with shiny new toys and Twitter. I remember the first Twitter YouTube, which was done in sort of pencil cartoon, showing how you might be in a restaurant saying, I'm having a coffee. I mean, it was so silly. What was it about Twitter for you? Because I've, I've got an email here from Twitter. Dear Stephen, thank you so much. <laughs> because you were one of the first yes. Twitter stars, weren't you? What yes. was it about Twitter that really turned you on? I think, uh, in a way, it was a kind of cowardice, d despite its intensity and all the things that it's, uh, you know, been responsible for now, from you know the Arab Spring to Trump, if you like. Um, it, it was the fact that you could be slightly at, at one remove from the people you're communicating with. If you email someone or you're they're a Facebook friend, friend is an emotional word, and I'm not sure that it's correctly used by Facebook, but that's a whole other issue. But with with Twitter, it's just that you know they follow you and you follow them and. You can dip in and dip out, and it's a small. They used to call it a micro blogging site originally, and it's a little micro posting. And you know, you can put the notice up on the notice board and walk away. And some people come and read it, some people won't. I think it's the new RSS. Do you remember RSS? I love the RSS. RSS. Yeah, feeds. I think Twitter. I was really annoyed RSS when feeds. Google stopped their news service and yeah. things like that. Yes, exactly. It is. It's. I, I, and. You know, we talk about the wisdom of crowds and we talk about the folly of crowds, you know, the, the, almost everything and, and technology is like a magnifying glass that shows you how everything in, 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 in human, you know, action over history is both good and bad. Yeah. You know, yeah. The best of things come out. You know, they used to say of war, uh, which is an awful thing, warfare, you know, that few things show the depravity of man more than war, but few things show the potential glory 
more than war. You know, some of the most heroic, self-sacrificial, uh, humane things have been done in the face of war, as well as, of course, the worst. It doesn't mean one's in favor of war, of course not. But in a smaller way, technologies like that, you do see the best. Every day you see the best that humans can do. I mean, in the British in particular, I was talking about this to, to a political journalist earlier today who was hanging around John Sargent, and he was saying, you know what, one of the things that makes you proud of Britain is, is the sense of humor. And in, in politics, it's wonderful to watch on Twitter. You know how, this is not a making party political point, uh, but how Theresa May, when she started the, the, the campaign, talked about strong and stable. But she said it so many times, that, and Twitter audiences, the ear of the, the Twitter follower is very finely tuned. She only had to say it four times before people would, I saw somebody who did Churchill's On the Beach's speech and say, I have nothing to offer the British people, but strong and stable, strong and stable, strong and stable, strong and stable, strong and stable. And you, you know, they just made her look ridiculous very quickly and showed that we were not going to put up with being cliche, you know, having these phrases thrown at us. Maybe Americans, you know, could put up with a politician who just said the same thing again and again and again, believed them, voted for them, but we weren't going to do that. And Twitter is quite a finely tuned mechanism for, for sorting out the BS, you know, and I, I, I appreciate that. You talked about Facebook um, and the, the very current conversation is whether Facebook and platforms like mm. them should actually be considered publishers. Should they yeah. take responsibility for what ends up on the site? Now, the, mm. the argument for that is quite obvious, mm. but of course Facebook would say, A, you can publish anything you want on the web, so why single out a particular service? Mm. And B, it's technically impossible at the moment to pre-moderate Yes. everything and, and check that they're, they can't they're publishing. can't have an editorial oversight exactly. of the kind of course, that a the, newspaper publisher can. Their success is based on, mm. on the fact that anyone can put anything up, so it's kind of exploded in size. At the same time they're saying we can't do it, they are of course constantly and almost in a panic trying to produce algorithms that do, because they are aware there is a problem, a serious problem. If 80%, some people have said, is the you know the proportion of uh, people who get their news from Facebook rather than from mainstream media, then uh, Surely it, it is incumbent upon someone who is providing 80% of their news sources to make sure that those news sources are not uh, defamatory, blatant lies, propaganda, the wrong kind of, you know, insulting. I, mean, I, um, I would posit that a publisher is responsible for all, all the people mm. that generate the content. They yeah. are employed by that publisher yeah. and Facebook clearly is not that. Yeah. So do we need a third definition? I think third a third, thing? exactly. I think there is a medium, a medium sort of um, definition that, that it's not beyond the wit of, a lot of, of, of lawyers of the right kind to, to, to find that. So that, the, you know, because this is, if you can invent, if man's wit and humankind's wit can invent the internet and mm. packet switching and all the incredible things that we take for granted and are so invisibly stitched into our, our every day, then surely they can find a way of making sure Who's that lawyers? these the dangerous lies don't, don't, don't proliferate. Who's lawyers though? Which country's Who's lawyers? lawyers? No, yeah, international lawyers I think is a international copyright lawyers. I mean, you know, there was no such thing as an internet lawyer 10, 10 15 years ago. Now it's as common a path for any lawyer to take. Go to a law school and say, what sort of law are you doing? So you know, criminal law, internet law, copyright law, this law, that law. And in the same way, there'll be robotics law and there'll be you know, different types of uh, artificial intelligence and you know, electronic ethics laws of that kind. So uh, at the moment, yes, it may be a sort of, uh, we're on the cusp of getting that fully integrated into the professions. But it, it, I think it, this will be seen as a, as a hiccup. But when it comes to people going to a pizza store and trying to set fire to it or, or kill the owner because fake news has told them that they're running a paedophile ring for Hillary Clinton or some such nonsense, you know. Yeah. I mean, that is, you know, people's parents are going to be killed or someone's child will die. Um, so your, your presentation was a, a warning that people should prepare mm. for the changes that are mm. coming. For example, artificial intelligence and automation. Mm quote, putting people out of jobs. And, and I guess it's not right I didn't, like that, is yes, it? I mean, no. jobs, jobs just won't, those jobs won't exist in the future, but other jobs will, rather like the, yes. the lift operators of yesteryear don't exist I, now, but uh, people have other work. Yeah. I mean, do, do you think I, we're I really was, going to be, is it that blink, no, really? No, 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 I didn't say that. I, I said that it, it, it was a sort of uh, transformation of the workplace, rather than, it's, you know, it's an obsolescence of certain types of job, but not that doesn't mean forced redundancy of, mm -hmm. of millions of workers who have then nothing but the dole to look forward to. Um, I always think it's a rather nice, uh, an elegant sort of uh, curlicue of history that Ned Ludd, um, 
uh, got his people to uh, to, to 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 wreck looms, uh, 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 automated looms, and we got the word Luddite from, yeah. because they were threatening his job. But it, and, and looms it was that were the first it, machines to use punched card systems that, that were yeah. used for computers all the way up to the yeah. 1970s. So, uh, so Luddites were, were well ahead of the game. And, and of course, the loom operators, you know, there, there are no longer the kind of weavers, hand weavers that Ned Ludd was trying to protect. He lost. And, and it is spitting into the wind to try, and, uh, to try and think that you can protect a lot of these jobs. And, and many of them are ones you wouldn't want to protect. Um, I mentioned one of the pleasing things about uh, AI and robotics, and that is what's known as Moravec's paradox, which is that uh, what we're incredibly bad at as individuals, um, machines tend to be very good at, mm. and in, in complicated sums, rapid and incredible access of memory from data banks uh, of a kind that we could never do, S sorting and swapping of information and cataloging, things like that. Things we don't want to do particularly, mm. they're dull yeah. and they're mechanical in a sense, and machines, by the definition, are mechanical, we can do it. But things that we can do without even thinking, like walk across a room or pick up a glass and have a sip of water, machines are hopeless at that, but that's fine because we don't want them to do that for us. So we only want machines to do the things that we find burdensome and messy. I mean, if you get machines to, to do all the sewer work and cleaning, no one's going to complain. Um, but obviously, if we were getting machines to be painters, <laughs> well, machines or television already are presenters, painters, or machines already of course are they television can do that. Yes. Yeah, they can do that. But, but I don't think anybody's particularly anxious that they take over from them. There's no pressure to do that. Where it gets difficult is in medium sort of service jobs, I think, like, like, like driving, obviously, is, is, is the one that's going to take the most attention. Stephen Fry, what is intelligence? <laughs> well, you could go the etymological route and you could say it, is, um, it means to read into. Leger is read and, and into, into leg. Uh, it's a reading into, intellectual, is, you know, as in lectern and lecture is a reading. Um, and that's, that's pretty good, actually, reading into things. In other words, pattern recognition. It's some, you know, just being able to see connections in things. Um, and the ability to see connections in things is a, it's a function not just of perception uh, and of, 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 of co pure cognition, but also of memory. So, for example, humans have an almost uncanny ability sometimes to see someone they don't really sort of like or trust. It doesn't always work, but very often you can trace it back to the fact that the last person they saw who had that particular squint or indeed wore those particular kind of shoes was someone who betrayed them or who was unpleasant or they later heard right. beat their spouse or something and they don't remember that consciously but it, it is just packed in there there's a quick and it's an evolutionary thing, I suppose, a quick connection in the same way that elephants remember being badly treated from 40 years ago. It's a, a thing you need to remember. It's, this person did me down, I'm not sure I like them. Or this person is warm and welcoming, I can trust them. Those kind of things. Now, you don't, these are hu kinds of human social intelligence that are magnificent. There is the kind that can do chess problems very quickly, um, but as we know, that's something machines can now do better. And then, I think um, somebody once said, uh, uh, in, in the moment a machine can do it, it stops being intelligent. Yes. So chess playing is no longer an intelligence thing because brute force uh, um, uh, analysis can, 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 can sort it. Isn't that a kind of arrogance? It we're, is. We're yes. just saying, well, no, now machines can do it. That's obviously not what intelligence it, is. It, what we're doing is the same thing that uh, theists did about God. God is everything and he created this and then science shows it, but not quite that. And so the, the, the domain shrinks a little yeah. and the domain of human intelligence has shrunk yeah. a little for that reason. Um, I think, you know, I think it is, it, it, you know, essentially it is a pattern recognition is as, as, as good as you can get. That yeah. is, you just yeah. described what a computer can and, and their training computers yeah, do. Indeed. So therefore, by, by then, extrapolation, computers can be considered to be intelligent, yes. I guess. But they can do it in certain spheres, in certain realms, or magisteria, as they call it. But, um, and people are talking about the moment that we, we arrive at AGI, artificial general intelligence. And that's when the, the various types of pattern recognition, you know, numbers, data, you know, uh, certain si faces and things like that, they all come together so that they can be intelligent across these different things. And that, that is, a, you know, including language, which is really almost our last sovereign kingdom, that this is something animals can't do, we're pretty sure. I mean, it's unique to us and it is, what has allowed us, we couldn't have had a civilization without language. Mm. 
because language can think forwards and backwards. You can tell a story of how we used to be because it has tenses. And you can say, I will meet you tomorrow afternoon there. We will build this defense here. And, you know, language allows us. And if machines now, of course, can understand language, really quite astonishing. Yeah. Uh, so if you've got an artificial intelligence that's good at that, and another one that's good at that, and another one that's good at that, and you, you get enough of them, and then you put something on top that goes, oh, you want to know about mm. the language problem? I'll, I'll dial up that one. You want to know about yeah. you know, walking and, and recognizing objects? I'll dial up that one. Surely just a collection of specialist intelligences yeah. under one umbrella is a general intelligence. It doesn't have to be a breakthrough. It that's, just has to be a collection of I think you're very right, Spencer. I think that is very likely to be the way it goes. Uh, that, that sort of history, somehow, that sounds, it almost rings a bell with the way yeah. things have yeah. Have, have worked out in the past in, in, in technology. And I think another thing that's very, uh, of course, is our own uh, spheres get closer and closer. So I, I don't think it's a very long time. I've, I've always had this as an idea, because, and not original to me, of course, where someone says, well, you know, silicon has, we've taken silicon so far, Moore's law has taken us mm. this far. We, it, it actually is now coming yeah. to an end. Um, but I've discovered this, um, this substance, which actually uh, needs an electrolytic fluid uh, to power it mm -hmm. um, and you sort of play with it a bit and you realize that electric fluid is blood and the substance is a tissue that is fueled by an, a charged liquid and, mm -hmm. and its, its charges send, make the, you know, and its heat is much more efficient than a, a silicon and wow, I've built my own brain there, <laughs> you know, it's a sort of piece of tissue. Yeah. Uh, and so I think that'll be very likely to be a medium for, for our intelligence. There, I mean, they talk about quantum computing, of course, and different, different ways in which this, the speeding, speeding up of processing is going to happen. But I think, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, th there, there are ways I've heard people use very sort of wonderfully vulgar things, you know, do, do I want to screw it? You know, <laughs> do, you know in, in a way, it's like, um, you know, do I want to kiss it? Isn't that what, you know, is, is, we have part of our intelligence, a huge part, is our emotional intelligence. Yes. Einstein would say, and did say the same thing. It's not just the cerebral power. It is something to do with our blends of fury, inquisitive desire, um, impatience, curiosity. These are very, very much more primal and uh, much harder to, to reduce to a table of calculations and memories. And, and, and can I suggest, because I have a, a theory on this, that emotions are a biological feedback yes. loop. You know, we're just higher order beings, so we yeah. kind of rationalize yeah. Why is my body telling me I want to do that again? I will call that happy or yes. pleasure. Yes. You know, but it's actually yes. just evolution. Um, yes. So a slug doesn't feel happy or, or, or fear. Yeah. It just its body reacts and goes. Yeah. But um, I think so. In that way, can't computers have emotions as well as they learn that they want to do things mm. again or things are bad for them? Yes, absolutely. It'd be one of the most sensible ways of programming is, is, to, is to motivate the the speed with which they learn in, at the moment. The what we call machine learning, which I'm sure will develop as a, as a whole field, but what motivates them to look in this direction or that direction? At the moment, it's, it's values that are assigned, it's weighting, it's given to, to a, a wider sense of the rules of the game, whether it's the game Jeopardy on television or the game Go. Um, but maybe you give it something else, some other kind of instinct to do things. Its reward is similar to our reward system, which is uh, really chemical, isn't it? It's, our, it's, our, it's tryptophan and serotonin and endorphins of various kinds that, that reward us. And then we have a pain system to deter us, and there's nothing to stop of giving that to a machine. You know, so, so data in, in, in Star Trek, the next generation, who's always trying to be human, you know, that, that's, he's, he, he, there are plenty of episodes which explore exactly that. Um, Stephen, thank you so much for your Such time. Such a pleasure. Thanks you. Thank you for having us at your place. And keep clicking, I love it. Thank you. Thank you.